Okay, so I've been looking for a single DIN car navigation Android based and CarPlay radio for a while now. So I found this on Amazon. There were only a few left and they got bought up pretty quick. Uh, I think I paid around $130 for it. Um, so I wanted to do a quick video on the installation. It's not perfect, but the radio does sound pretty good. And I wanted to go through the installation issues and, uh, and challenges. So here we go. Okay, so the radio is going in a BMW Z3 Roadster. And what I've done so far is I've removed the old radio and I've test fitted it, dry fitted the new radio in. Um, the challenges I'm running into, uh, besides the fact that the previous owner had butchered the wiring, but I'm going to fix all that because I went to a junkyard and got the original factory harness. So I'm going to re resolder in the original factory harness that um, that looks like the other side of this. So when I'm done, and this is the actual radio harness, by the way, that came with the radio. Here's the actual radio. It is actually very sleek looking and it's nice. Um, I tested it and it, it works very well. So that's good news. Um, electronically um, and uh, software wise and functionally, it's, it's pretty decent for the price. Uh, however, the issue I'm running into is getting it installed in the car as you can notice this is a very small car tight dash area if you have anything that's bigger than this if you have more room than this to work with this will wrist radio will work very well for you uh, my problem is if you notice these bezels are right over here and everything is just very very tight also my uh single din radio um i guess compartment is recessed in so what happens is this actual plate that came with the new radio um, it goes inside the, uh, the opening here. And what that does is it pushes the radio in. But if you notice the radio over here itself, the outside screen is much bigger than the actual single DIN, uh, casing. So basically you have this extra space. And so that means the radio can't go flush inside that opening. So that causes some challenges with locking into this plate. Uh, the silver plate that's there. So those are the challenges I'm running into. I'm also trying to um, get the silver plate to stay in place. If you notice, watch this, it'll just move back and forth. I can't get it. So what's gonna happen is when um, the radio is in, the radio is gonna have some movement. Uh, these pins are supposed to go down and lock it in place, but it really doesn't seem to work that well because of just the way it's made. Uh, they really didn't go through the design aspect of it too well, but Hey, for, for what you get, it's not bad. Uh, we can make it work somehow. So it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to it's going to be decent. Uh, so let's. I'll as I finish this up and then get it buttoned up. I'll take more uh, documentation of it. Okay, so I have my factory wire, wiring returned back to normal. So I've got it all buttoned up, nice and neat. Just gonna put that in here. So. Basically, uh, other than my issues with the frame over here, uh, it's a pretty standard uh, radio connection. So if, you, if you've done any radio wiring before, it's very standard. Just get yourself a harness to fit your car. Uh, any antenna adapters you may need, I need to one. Um, and then also you wanna make sure you wire up the microphone wire. Um, and I've got the microphone going up here on the, so in this car, I don't really need other things like backup camera. Um, the amp has already been uh, deleted. So it's just a standard hookup. But um, if, if you're used to the radio hookup, this should, it's fairly straightforward. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, the hardest part was the actual physical part, which is trying to get this to fit in um, because of the oversized screen. But again, if you want CarPlay, you're gonna have to sacrifice something because um, it's hard to get a this is actually the, the smallest screen I've seen and it's very uh, Nicely done because it, there's no buttons or anything uh, Even the volumes adjusted but on the screen just slide up and down um, So here we go Okay, so I've got the radio wired up and slid in to the metal house and you can see where it's a little bit Oops, I'm trying to get yeah, you can see where it slides a little bit but uh, it is locked in. It won't come out more than this. Well, I lied. I'll have to play with this some more. But yeah, I, I'm trying to get it locked in. So that's the problem. I can't get that frame to lock into the radio. 
but uh, I'll play with it and I'll, I'll get it in. It's just a matter of fiddling with it. Again, uh, that's the only real downside of this radio. Uh, so let me keep going with that. Okay, so I've got the radio in, kind of. It's still going to be a little loose and wiggle. I'm going to figure out something to wedge it to make sure it doesn't slide out. But it's, it's pretty firm. It's not going to, like, just come out uh, unexpectedly. So, um, but I'm going to keep playing with it. And so that, that's the only real downside right now. Uh, when the radio first comes, there's little plastic tabs inside these little holes where the keys would go. And the key goes with the divot on the outside of the radio. Um, in order to, to put the key in to insert it, you have to cut the tabs out that are inside here. Uh, the instructions, well, there are no instructions so to tell you what to do. So this was something it took me a little while to figure out. But I just took a utility knife and cut the little plastic tab that was inside that little slot. I cut it out on both sides. And you would insert the key the up opposite way with the divot facing outward again on this side. And again, cut the tab out. And that'll help you uh, get the radio uh, removed from the car whenever you need to. Also, initially when it comes, it's inserted in the sleeve. And that's the way to get it out is to cut that tab out and then get the sleeve out. Uh, other than that, uh, the other minor negative is that when you first turn the car on, it takes about a minute for you to get everything done. So let me explain that now. So um, I'm recording with my iPhone, so I'm going to try to do the um, CarPlay while I record. Let's see how that goes. Um, so it's going to take about 30 seconds, so I'm going to turn the key on. <coughs> and you're going to see the uh, Android um, stuff come up. There we go. Um, it's going to take about... 30 seconds or so for the radio to boot up. I'm not too thrilled about the way this this is, but my buttons are functional. Everything's so it's again, I have to give up something to get the CarPlay radio in here because I really want to be able to drive this car with uh, the maps going while I'm driving, so that helps a lot. Okay, so the radio is up. At this point, uh, the thing you have to do is just Find, go slide over and go to T-Links, and that's what links your phone over to um, CarPlay um, or Android, I guess. Okay, so once that's in, now I'm going to plug in my phone. Uh, I'm using the plugged version. I, I like that better. Um, everything works great. I, can, I love this view. Get my maps, music, um, directions, and everything going, and... Uh, if need be, I could just go to the menu and go to my messages, and it'll read my messages as we go. If you're used to CarPlay, you know how that works. Spotify works. Uh, so for the most part, everything seems to be working fine. In, in order to use the volume, this is the last thing I wanted to show. Um, this little, uh, it's like your um, menu button on your iPhone, kind of like that. If you click on it, it gives you these options, which is really, really cool. So you can increase or lower the volume from here. Um, See, like that and it, the, the screen is a little touchy but you can do it uh, which is nice and then the other thing uh, which you can do is you just click away for him and then if you wanted to change the volume while you're uh, listening to music or whatever you can also just swipe down and it lets you do the volume it lets you also gives you some of the other menu options which is really really cool as well equalizer is really cool played with that uh, helped a lot uh, brightness of the screen so uh, again so things seem to, seem to work pretty good. Uh, like I said, the screen's a little touchy, but for for the things that you need, it really works very well. So hopefully uh, this video helps people to decide and then uh, put this in. And like I said, to reiterate, um, the radio works good, sounds pretty decent quality. I don't even have an amp in here, um, but it's a Roadster, it's a convertible. I don't really plan on listening to music a lot. I really wanted it for the for the maps and uh, directions while I drive. Uh, we go for the ride in the mountains with, uh, with my sons in their cars. So we're kind of, you know, uh, riding around sometimes aimlessly. So this really helps. Uh, and then the other thing is I want to be able to take messages, text messages from here and just respond real quick or um, uh, take phone calls. But uh, like I said, uh, for the most part, this, this fits everything I need. The fit and finish, um, it's, it's not, 100% perfect for my case depending on your case it may be maybe better uh, I really wish that you know I could move the screen up just a little bit if I could go up just maybe you know five five millimeters or so I would clear these rings and it would look really nice but function wise everything works good all right hope it helps take care